As we have done for millennia, we chose a work constantly on our statuary. The statues are our sentinels, blind but ever watchful. They are, and have always been, repositories for our most precious secrets and strongest powers. The crafting of each is a long and sacred process performed only by those Chozo who have lifetimes of experience in such things. We have left these relics on planets across the solar system. Some are merely reminders, silent emblems of the Chozo that serve as icons of peace in lands that know only war. Others wield subtle strength, exerting their influence in ways beyond the understanding of mortal creatures. Still, others are guardians of our secret ways, and these can be as terrible as they are beautiful. Those who respect and honor these relics will know the friendship of the Chozo. Those who deface or destroy them will know our wrath, unfettered and raw. What's going on everybody? It's me, Dio Gen Z, and we are here playing some Metroid Prime from the Prime Trilogy Pack. So I'm playing with Wii controls if you're wondering why my cursor looks so whimsical wandering around the screen like it has no control bound to the limited axes of the GameCube controller because I'm not playing on the GameCube. Ha ha! And I love it. I really do recommend that you get a hold of this game, even if it's just the new Play Controls Metroid Prime, which I've seen advertised on my Nintendo emails, the official ones that come from Nintendo, so I know when they actually come out with some cool new games for my 3DS, which they've been really throwing them out there like flapjacks at IHOP, and throwing the good sauce on them, because things like Fire Emblem and Paper Mario 3D are, are really spectacular. I haven't even fully played through Kid Icarus and... Uh, the Resident Evil game. But while we're down here, aha, we have a missile. Let's pick up a map station pack. These are very useful, and I, of course, won't always seek them out. I didn't even know this was down here, to be honest. It was just a convenient fall. I'm not going to lie to you here. I did not plan that out. Uh, because, like I said, last episode, uh, I admitted I am retarded with maps. I just don't know them, and that's why I use GPS. I need a friggin' robot to step-by-step step tell me where to go. I have what is called Minecraft navigational skills, you know? Uh, I, can, I can remember areas based on the buildings and animals and other things that were in the area, whatever organisms I encountered while I was there. So I have a familiar sense of the Metroid world, but I don't know how they all connect room to room. I don't have such a left brain mentality to have the capacity to keep those minds cataloged, those minds, those maps cataloged in my mind. I wish I had multiple minds. Then it would be easier to think of this shit, remember it. So, you know, there, there's, a, there's a lot. There's a lot to be desired in my navigational skills. But still, uh, if you get the map stations, I bet you'd do a lot better with them than I would. I'm just saying, uh, you know, they won't help me out a ton and I won't make that a consistent thing. But if you get a hold of it, just make sure you look on all dimensions. It, like I said, is a three-dimensional map, and the biggest mistake I would make when viewing those kind of things is looking on one level, thinking I'm looking at the level that I'm on, but I'm actually overlaying a bunch of other levels from other parts of the map in this world. So it's something to make sure that you toggle around with your nunchuck or your GameCube controller if you're playing a log on the GameCube. I have both versions of this. I have the Prime Trilogy, the complete pack, not the new Play Controls individual sets. And I also have Prime on the GameCube. Oh, but I just realized. We can't really go that way, seeing as, uh, you know, we don't have power bomb technology yet. That's still one of our forms that are malfunctioned on this power suit. We'll have to take a different path. And we don't have the spider ball either. We didn't even have that going on, I don't think, back at the frigate. So forget going that way. Okay, how about door number? We don't want to go that way, I think, either. Uh, we just went this, yeah, we just went this way. We just went this way, right? Yep, this is the way that we went. And yeah, we don't want to go that way. So how about the elevator itself? 
the central thing in this room. This is definitely the way we have to go. No, actually, this was it. Okay, yeah, this was it. Sorry. Sorry for the jumps. Sorry for the inconsistent knowing of where I'm going. Um, it's actually not it. And this is it. No, wait. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. And I'll show you why. I'll show you soon. I promise. We can't go down that little hole yet. It's got nothing for us. And I just missed my opportunity to hop in there. Damn it! But, uh, actually, we don't have the hopping ability with the Morph Ball. That's something else that's taken away. It's a cool new feature that is only in the Wii Play Controls version of Metroid Prime. But it was introduced in Prime 3 Corruption that you could flick the Wii Remote to do a jump. And unlike the Blob, where I complain about that mechanic of having to do platforming by Waggle, it's a different sort of circumstance when it is in the Morph Ball because you're usually navigating tight, narrow passageways. We actually had to come back out here, in fact, so what we were doing in those chambers weren't helping us at all. We have to turn around up on this bridge and take the high road. Take the high road. Destroy things. That is the higher way in Metroid Prime. Destroy the creatures. But instead of every time having to lay down a power bomb, if you want to do a simple platform jump with the Morph Ball, because there was no button that you could push before with the Morph Ball. It was all done by releasing bombs and then bouncing off of those consecutively to get to higher areas. And that mechanic is still enabled here. There's still Morph Ball bomb jumping we'll have to pull off if we want to get some of the better items like energy tanks and missile upgrades. But again, those aren't completely required in the game, and it's nice to have the ability to just do a little flick, and then it's like commanding Samus in ball mode. Go, Samus! Yah! Yah! Sending her up a little hop to get her to where she needs to be. So we actually had to go into this room first, because down this winding hall... Ah, oh, the screechy bats! I hate those enemies. Sometimes it's harder to hit them when you have Wii Motion, uh, but that's just my own my own fail control. I'm not gonna blame that on Wii Motion, it's plenty accurate, it's just me not, not being accurate at all. <laughs> Again, I, I really wish that Nintendo would have made a Metroid arm cannon peripheral. And maybe they still can, maybe they still can for Wii U. I mean, ideally, I suppose they'd be using the Wii U's controller pad thing and that would, I could see that being pretty useful. I could see that not having to switch between maps would be so much better if I could just look down instead of what I'm doing, taking endless amounts of footage. So many minutes you don't even see of me just staring at maps. Staring at them and switching back and forth and being like, is this it? I, I, this looks kind of it, but if I could just look down and up simultaneously to see where I am, I really could see that being... Quite a badass Metroid. I will say, I wasn't excited for Wii U at first. But now that it's out on the market and it's getting better games, and I've seen what Sonic Galaxy, I mean Sonic Land, or I don't even know what the new Sonic title is for Wii U. But I just saw it. I'm, I'm out of the loop with Wi-Fi. I don't have Wi-Fi at home. I go to Wi-Fi hotspots to upload these episodes, so I find out about news a little bit later than everybody else, but I must say that looks brilliant! Absolutely stunning. Gorgeous. Totally looks like the art style and almost platforming sense of Mario Galaxy, and that you're kind of doing these large running and jumping maneuvers on these floating planet toids. Not really planets, but planetoids. And the video was of a green hill zone textured planetoid, and it look badass but you know for for a gamecube game that was put out in 2002 metroid prime is looking pretty badass on wii i must say it also got some slight graphical improvements if you look on the official wiki of metroid that's right i do some metroid wikia homework because well this is i did metroid log file lookups in all these wikis way before i did the lp because it's a game i'm passionate about and i want to know more of so if you read the wiki on the slight differences between the Wii version and GameCube version, they'll say to you that 
light bloom effects have been altered and some slight graphical tweaks to water effects have been altered as well, which is nice. I didn't really notice the water or bloom effects, but what I'm basically doing right here is searching this hallway. All that you need is in this hall, so don't worry, you're not going to have to go tons of backtracking. You're going to have to backtrack on this hall for sure, but not backtracking a couple of rooms to find these symbols, but we can't see them, or we can see them. You, you can see this you can see where they'll be. All right, that's that's an enemy. That's not what I was trying to look at. You can see the imprint of them on the ground or wherever they're attached to. But to activate them and open that big circular door, we're going to need to scan them. So the scan visor has practical uses in this game besides just being there for the completionist. And that's a pretty cool thing with Metroid. Besides looking in the prime of its graphics, it really is in the prime of its gameplay. It's just so honed in awesome. It really, it, it's got it nailed. And that right there is us nailing, what, the third? No, yeah, the third of those symbols. So there's probably one more that we have to do, and then we will gain access to whatever is behind those big bolted doors. Actually, that was the second? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not keeping track while I'm commentating. Who has time to count to four when, when really, I mean, I'm talking up a storm? Oh, one more to go. So there's five. But, uh, you know, there are some games on Wii that don't even look good on Wii to start. And that's unfortunate. It really shows that you don't need super high intensical graphic cards and things like that to make a really good looking game. I will give GameCube this. For its time, it was a really souped up console. Although it didn't stay that way when 360 came about. At least I don't think it stayed that way. I really have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm talking out of my ass right now, as far as I'm concerned. I Oh, we just had to scan that, and we're good. Cool, man. What is this? It is something good. I feel the power in my arm cannon. Charge beam. Yes. Now we can charge our lasers and fire a big ass blast at our opponents. Oh, good, creepy eyeballs on the walls. A perfect target practice, how convenient. Oh, by the way, don't miss that, yeah, that right there. Quick showing that there is a log, so if you completionists out there want it, don't miss it, it's right here behind me. But boy, oh boy, things are going to be beautiful from here on out. I love the charge beam. It's one of my favorite upgrades that you get in this game. I know it's a really early upgrade and you're like, well, Dio, why don't you like the missiles more? Well, the missiles need a recharge. Uh, all you need to do is hold the A button down to release a charge shot. And as you can see by blasting those eyes, a single shot wasn't significant enough to scald them off the wall, but a big blast from our beam cannon that's charged is big enough and that will break them free and uh, clear the path completely. Oh, this right here. A nice, easy missile expansion to get. Like I said, I'm not 100%ing, but I will get a couple that are in our path. I mean, that was literally in our path. And I don't think we need to go back to that room for anything ever again. I think there is some additional missile expansions that you could have gotten there, but you need the spider ball, which we don't have right now to obtain them, so it wasn't worth me showing you where it was, but I'll give you the heads up. I have obtained it before, so I know that one's there for sure. If you just want to know where missiles are and health packs and tanks, just do a Google search, really. It's it's on so many wikis, it's on so many IGN reports and, and things that are free PDFs. There's really no need to buy the strategy guide. You could even look up an LP of it if you want to sit through a, a montage of it. I was thinking of doing a montage of getting all the missile items later, but then I realized I'm never going to have the time to physically find all these missile upgrades, do the research, figure out where it is. So, ah, I will leave that up to the rest of the informational community. I am a, uh, a more storytelling lp -er. I'll give you some information, but not too much. Just, just enough to wet your whistle to where you want to go search more because information finding is a good skill to have. So go out there and learn, my viewers.
because I will see you on the next episode. Many long years have passed since we Chozo first took root in this land. The passage of time has always been a source of fascination to us. It is the belief of many Chozo sages that the truths of the universe hide within the tumbling currents of time's flow. Even as we search for answers there, however, we find illumination in other, unexpected places. We know not how the ability has come to us, but recently many Chozo have begun to sense things beyond the realm of ordinary perception. Strange sights and inexplicable sensations flood our minds, filling us with visions of the past and future. We take this growing ability to be a sign of our burgeoning harmonization with the infinite. Perhaps, finally, the universe's secrets are becoming known to us.